Hello everyone and welcome back to the Out of the Park Developments channel. My name is AZ Axel, also known as Alex Murray. Today we're going to be doing tutorial number three in our little short Getting Started Tutorials playlist. Today we're going to be talking about player management for general managers and managers. So in the last video we talked about how to get started with a save. We picked up the Atlanta Braves, which you can now see on your screen. So if you've got your OTP open, let's go ahead and go over there real fast and let's get started on this. So we want to talk a little bit about player management, what to do when you first get started. Getting used to the team and familiar with the interfaces is going to be one of the quickest things you need to get done. And to get started with, we're going to start by going to the transaction pages. The transaction pages are going to be the quickest and easiest way to be able to get familiar with all your players on your team. That includes major league teams and any minor league teams that are part of your organization. So for example, the Braves, they of course have AAA, AA, single A plus, single A, and a couple of rookie ball teams. So getting familiar with all your players is going to be important if you're playing as a general manager. Also, understanding how to be able to move players around in your organization is going to be important, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. This transaction overview page is going to be what you're going to want to come to and be able to access. Whenever you want to make changes to your team's rosters on any of your level of organization teams, you can do that by simply dragging and dropping players across any of these organizations. So, for example, if we see people with green arrows, that is usually an indication by the AI or by your assistant general manager, the player is ready for better competition. This is a very good sign. This is normally a meaning that they need a promotion. So we can drag and drop people like uh, Hernandez here to be able to bring him up to AAA if we would like to. If you see people with red arrows like uh, Ricky over here, that means they are being overmatched at the current level they are at. Now, you can keep them there to try to keep them in a challenging position where they might be able to flourish if they can grow. But you've got to be careful with that kind of stuff because if they uh, don't develop very well, then you run the risk of them having some pretty serious downturn. So whenever they have red arrows, I almost always try to drag them down a level just to make sure they're at an appropriate level that they're trying to compete with. This is a really good screen to get familiar with because it'll give you a whole bunch of information about all your players and it'll let you see what players are on on each level of your organization. Moving on from these screens, we have the injured list, which is basically an overview of all the injured players in your organization. You can change the left side of this screen to match whatever you're looking for at the current moment, if it's minor leagues or major leagues. And of course, the right side of the screen is all of your injured players. Major league players are at the top, there's a space, and there's all the minor league players down below that. You'll be able to make... Um, injured list uh, transactions and changes on this screen right here, drag players from the left side of the screen that are injured to the right side of the screen, and then um, from the right side of the screen to the left if you want to bring them off the injured list. Um, for certain players, you may want to do rehab assignments. You can do that by simply right-clicking, going to transactions, and once they are done with their IL time and their injury time, there will be a new option on this list that will say send on rehab assignment to the minors, I believe. And you'll want to be able to do that for players that have had longer 60-day IL stints. For players that have more serious injuries, they need a little bit of time to recuperate and to rehab. And that's a great option to send them AAA to be able to accomplish that. The Minor Leagues tab is a simple way to be able to see just your minor leagues at a given notice time. This basically skims out the major leagues and your 40-man roster and replaces them with just this nice 6-up or potentially 4-up depending on your monitor size of just your minor leagues. So it's very useful for that. The waivers and DFA tab we're going to skip for now. We're going to have a whole nother tutorial down the road, guys, about waivers and DFA. There's a whole lot to talk about there, and we're not covering them in a little seven-minute video about management. Trade status is a way for you as a GM to be able to tell the AI whether or not a player is on your trading block, if you're untouchable from other teams to be able to try to trade for them, and if you're not interested in ever, ever acquiring them because they just simply are not what you're looking for. Um, this is a good way to be able to tell the AI if you have certain preferences about certain players. And lastly, for GMs, you have your international roster. This is where you'll be able to come and see all of your scout discoveries. These are international players, usually around the ages of 16 to 17, that your scout has discovered on trips or scouting across the international waters. 
these players are normally very, very underdeveloped. They're very raw, and they're very young. They won't be making your team for a while. Consider them like draft picks, but they're free and they're yours. Do with them as you please, and please, please, please try to develop them as best as you can. As uh, they age, they will automatically get promoted out of this roster into your minor leagues, most likely straight into your rookie systems. You can also ask the AI to promote the players in the top right-hand corner to be able to have that done automatically when you feel like it. Moving on to managers. This is going to be a fun one right here. We get to talk about the pitching and lineups tabs. And as a manager, your job is a lot more simpler. As I mentioned in the last tutorial, there are a lot less things to manage and worry about, which is weird because you're called a manager, but you do less. You're not a general manager. Managers only need to worry about who is in the starting rotation, who is in the bullpen, who is in the lineups, and who is in the depth charts. And that's basically it. Who you play and when you play them are the most important things when it comes to being a manager. So this is your pitching page. This is where you're going to be able to set up your starting rotations in the bottom left-hand corner. You can simply drag and drop people from the main area in the middle of the screen right down into there. You can even replace people if you wanted to. So let's say we wanted to put Charlie Morton at the number one spot and make him the ace. We could simply drag him down and place him right there. And you can see it automatically swapped max freed with charlie morton so if you already have people in there and it knows that you're swapping two starting pitchers it will just simply make the transition for you now you can change as a manager the size of your rotation if you want a six-man rotation or just a four-man rotation you can do that that's absolutely up to you you can also choose who the next starter is, is scheduled to be. If you want to be able to skip a starter and then come back to them, you can also change that. These are all part of your rotation settings down here in the bottom left-hand corner. You can also change your rotation mode if you want to be able to be more about who's highest rested or being strict on your order and making sure that you're going right down the list one through five. Depending upon what kind of manager you are, you might find that each setting has differences, pros and cons to them that are important to you as a manager to fulfill. And then last but not least, you are allowed to use starting pitchers in relief. If you feel like it, you can either choose an option that allows you to do that all the time, you can be absolutely against it, or only in crucial situations when there are no relievers left to be able to actually pitch that are, you know, um, not fatigued. Because your pitchers will get fatigued as they are pitched day in and day out. So occasionally, some people will have a starting pitcher come in as relief if there is nobody else left to find. Your bullpen is set up right next to that on the right side. You can also change the roles of every single person in the bullpen. You can change them from closers to setups to specialists to long relievers, middle relievers, and even people like long relievers and emergency starting pitchers. So if you've got multiple um, starters in your bullpen, for example, the Atlanta Braves have got Josh Tomlin in the bullpen, and he technically could be, as they have in the bullpen right now, a long reliever or an emergency starting pitcher. So do with these as you'd like. You can do anything you like as the manager to be able to set that up exactly the way you want it to be. And lastly, we're going to talk about lineups. This is going to be how your hitters and batters and fielders are all set up. Now, the first thing that I want to mention is that there are four different lineups that you might get, up to four, technically, and that is going to be against right-handed pitchers, left-handed pitchers, and then lefties and righties with the DH. And as the National League, you have to have all four. As the American League, you just get the right-handed and left-handed DH lineups, so it's only two, so lucky you guys. Um, on top of both of the lineups, you do have a graphical depth chart that you'll get on this whole entire um, tab system as well. This gives you a rough overview of not only all the players on your active roster, but where they would be slotted in a depth chart overview, which is a really cool way to be able to see all your players at any given time. You also have lineups overviews, which is similar to the graphics depth charts, but it's just for your lineups. And then there's also technically a seven-day opener um, lineups approach where you could actually schedule the next seven days it will actually show you the projected starters you're going up against and you could actually plot out your next seven days and get the lineups exactly as you'd like them and in case you just want to sim it now we're going to talk a little bit about um the last thing for this tutorial is going to be about your lineups and depth charts lineups 
Very similar to how the pitching rotation in the bullpen works. You drag and drop players from the top section into the batting order that you'd like to do. So, for example, I already see that Austin Riley is out of his third base position. Let's drag and drop him in over Camargo. So we'll go ahead and put him in, and he's instantly slotted in as the uh, third baseman. Now, if you don't have a spot available and it's just being put in as a random player, they will come in. To, now, sometimes they'll come in as blank positions they if their if their position is available they'll come in as that occasionally you may see that they come in with a blank position it would look something like this you can always change their position after you've added them to get them to the exact position you want so that's how you'll change where they start before you jump into a baseball game there will also of course be a batting lineup last second changing spot when you get into play a game but we'll talk about that on a later tutorial as well the depth chart's very similar as well. As you can see, we've already gotten somebody out of position, which is going to be Pache. So we'll go ahead and bring Christian back in. He plays center, and you can see our depth chart updated to reflect that information. And this depth chart is going to be a way for you to be able to tell the game who subs in for a player if they're tired or if they need a day of rest. For example, shortstops and center fielders and catchers are more likely to need days off every now and then versus, say, a first baseman. First basemen are very, very durable. They don't have as much need day in and day out, so they will normally survive a lot longer without getting much fatigue. But you would always be wise to have backups to all these positions, regardless of your positional fatigue, and especially for the catcher, shortstop, and center field positions. I highly recommend that. So for this example, Ender Enciarte is our backup center fielder. Our backup shortstop is Adrianza. And Jackson is our backup catcher at this point. So we have everything covered perfectly fine. And you can always make changes on this by simply dragging and dropping players into the Utility 1 and Utility 2 slots, as well as defensive subs if you want to have defensive substitutions come in either the 7th, 8th, or ninth inning. If you've got people who are better defenders uh, at a certain position, you can do that. Now, the Braves have some really good defenders. I don't think I see anybody on this list that would even be a substitution that would be better than the original player that is there. Maybe Ozuna in left field would be an option if we wanted to, say, have someone like an Ender Inciarte take over that position in the 7th, 8th, or ninth. But that's up to your discretion as you see fit. And again, you can just drag and drop them straight in. The last thing we're going to talk about, pinch hitters and pinch runners. Pinch hitters are a way for you to be able to have anybody from your depth chart who is not starting have a chance to be able to be a pinch hitter. And your order is going to be key. However this order is set up, that's what the game will try to use when it's trying to simulate a game and you're not in control. So if you simulate a game without yourself playing it, these orders will matter. And that's what the AI will try to use first. All right. Similar with pinch runners. As you see fit, the AI will try to make sure that your order is aligned with how it uses players over the course of a simmed general game. And that covers a whole bunch of information about the transaction pages for GMs and then pitching and lineups. We'll have more videos down the road, guys, for a whole bunch more subjects. So stay tuned and we'll cover a whole bunch of stuff like this and more down the road.